So I thought it would be fun to work out the parameterization of a Mebia strip. Um, if you haven't seen one of these before, it, it goes like this. You take a strip of paper, right? And then instead of doing sort of the, the natural thing and, and attaching this corner to this corner and then uh, this corner to this corner and then taping it so that you have a cylinder, you do something else. You take this corner and you attach it down here and you take this corner and you attach it up here and then you tape it together and you end up with this uh, piece of paper with a half twist. So this is a Mebius strip and it's got some interesting properties. It'll be a useful example to have in our basket going forwards. Um, if you've never actually played with one of these, like made one, uh, and, and I know it sounds dumb. You're like, Ooh, that's about as exciting as a paper bag or a paper towel roll or something like that. Yeah, no, it's actually a little bit niftier and, and here's why. Um, if you draw a line down the middle of this thing like this, okay. Now, now you cut along that red line. What happens? Take a guess and then make one. See if you're right. And then once you've got that figured out, what happens if you do it again? Does the same thing happen again or something different? I guarantee you will not be able to predict what happens correctly for, for both of those things. Um, anyways, so, so I'll leave that for you to, to mess with. Now, how do we parameterize a surface like this? It's not the graph of a function or anything else, but it is actually a ruled surface, right? There's, there's all kinds of little straight lines uh, around this thing and we did the cylinder already so there might be a way to do this how to get things to wrap around well we use what we have from the um, torus parameterization so let's go back to that so for the torus parameterization we had r plus little r cosine t um, cosine s and then r plus little r cosine t sine s and then we had little r uh sine t okay so that was our um parameterization for oh yeah yeah for 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 the torus so now the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to take out the s's and put in the t's so that this thing is just now a function of a single variable okay why would i do that what do i get well i get a curve and if our torus looks like this, then it's going to be a curve that lives in that toroidal surface because the coordinates still match. Uh, it's still part of that parameterization. It just happens to be the, the curve where the S and T are the same. So this is going to be the image of a diagonal line in the ST plane getting mapped in here. And so it's going to go around and it, it's going to go down and da, 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 whatever and come around. Um, as it does this traversal, it's gonna end up looping around the small circle exactly once, and it's gonna end up looping around the big circle exactly once. Okay, so let's move forward with this guy. And um, <clears throat> let's see, I'm going to now uh, take that we've got T in both of these coordinates. But I'm going to have a little bit of fun, and I'm going to um, increase the speed at which we loop around the uh, the small circle. So this is the one where we go around the small circle. So I'm going to bump it up by a factor of six. Now this means it's going to be looping six times around the small circle um, as it while we move around the the large circle. And actually, maybe just to get a bit of space, I'm going to put this path over here and so we end up with a path that looks like this pretty cool right so you can see now that as we uh go once around this way we go around six times around the uh the the small diameter or circumference okay and you can also imagine like what would have happened if i um did something similar um but this time, let's see, we're going to uh, have those ones go at their normal rate. 
and we'll speed up the other one to go three times as fast. So it's going to go three times around uh, the big circle as it goes once around the small circumference. And there we go. So we can have fun with donuts like this all day long, right? So this one, in the time it takes it to get once around this way, it actually goes one, two, three times around in the, uh, the, the larger direction. All right, so what do I need to make a maybe a strip? Well, I'm gonna take two curves traveling through this toroidal surface. Um, and I'm actually gonna slow down the speed that they're going so that it, it only gets a halfway around the smaller diameter by the time we get there. So let's see, so what do we have? So I'm gonna take, um, and I'll call this one uh, alpha. And so this is going to be, now we're gonna see, da, 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 fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Um, so I'm gonna have t over two, and t over two, and t over two. So that's controlling how fast we uh, go around the, the small diameter there. And let's see, let's make this one uh, blue for good measure. And then I'm also going to have a copy of this, which is um, <coughs> green. And we'll call this one uh, beta, let's see beta and for this one we're going to put some shift in there so we have a uh, pi plus this guy and pi plus I really should have left myself more room so I'm just adding pi to the argument to to get it like halfway around uh, the circle in advance of the other loop. So now let's take a look at uh, the toroidal surface with alpha and beta plotted into it. So there you have it. So there's there's my um, alpha curve and my beta curve. So there's uh, beta down, at, well, you can't really see it there. Beta is this one down here at the bottom and alpha is this one here in the blue. And so now when I um, remove the toroidal surface, which I've just added here for visualization, right? The, the blue and the green, these, these formulas, this is one curve, just the blue curve. This is just the green curve. So I, I'm going to take away this, uh, this, this surface and now connect them by straight lines between those two using our straight line interp interpolation. There we go. So there is our Mobius strip. So the, um, the parameterization here, st, this is gonna be my one minus s alpha t plus uh, s beta t. <laughs> so it's a bit of a hairy uh, formula. I think if I added all that stuff together and did the, the, the vector arithmetic to put it into one formula, I don't think you'd like me anymore. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, but there you are. And, and so there is a nice parameterization of a Mobius strip. And so one of the other things that's that's important about the Mobius strip, and, and we'll talk more about this later and, and why it's important, is because it only has one side, and that means it is non-orientable. So for instance, if I put a little unit normal vector and attach it to this point over here, and then I just kind of track it around the midline and see what happens to it as I move it along, it would be point, pointing out here, and then here, 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 blah, 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 blah. So each of these is supposed to be orthogonal to the surface. That's how I'm trying to draw it. And now look what happens. I'm come back. I'm on the opposite side of where I started. So if this red arrow is supposed to indicate like which way is up on this surface, you can't actually define up for this surface. It's non-orientable.